Views and opinions expressed on the following program are those of the host and guests and do not necessarily reflect the policy or position of Owen TV's management, staff, or board of directors. Detroit Basketball! And hello and welcome in to Views from the Sidelines. I'm your host, Joey Tysig. My partner, Malik Hill. We're back at it in the thick of the sports season, our favorite time of the year. Football and basketball going on right now. Um, today, we're going to talk a little bit about college football, uh, give some updates on Michigan, Michigan State, where they're at, um, talk some college basketball. Now that that's kind of, they've gotten some games under their belts, we'll actually touch on the NBA a little bit because Pistons have some news with Cade Cunningham. And then and the Warriors are stomping through everybody like yeah. it's 2016. Yeah. So, and then we got picks, of course, at the end, um, which I'm sad about. But we'll talk about that later. So, right in the get right into it. College football you got some big games coming up. Um, the biggest being Michigan State, Ohio State. Michigan State still can control their own destiny, but they have to beat Ohio State. They have to pull off the win of wins. Yeah. And after losing Lee to Purdue, win. Purdue, I'm not as confident anymore. They look like they're in Death Star mode right now. Yeah. Granted, they did just beat Maryland, and they actually played pretty well. Um, they got back on their feet, which is a good sign. I thought that if they would have stumbled again, by I, I was scared that they could have stumbled again and lost to Maryland, but they got away with it. They did good. They played well. Um, and now you're going to see two Heisman candidates going at it. C.J. Stroud, Kenneth Walker. I'm hoping it's a good game, but I am very nervous that Ohio State just blows out Michigan State. I think it'll start out pretty competitive because Ohio State's defense is still very sketchy, and they've got holes in the defensive backfield, and they're inconsistent with pass rush. Mm-hmm. So Mel Tucker and that offense, they're they're going to call creative stuff to get on the board fast because you have to do like Oregon did to get a chance on – to beat Ohio State. You have to jump out early, right. get up 7 nothing. If you can, stop them again and get more points on the board. Yeah. You got to jump out on them. Right. And the good thing is that Michigan State can run the ball, so if they do get ahead, maybe they can play some game control. But Ohio State's offense is so explosive, it's hard to yeah. hold them down necessarily. So I'm, I'm hopeful, but I'm not – I don't know. I'm not really expecting a win, I guess. Um, I believe – Jalen Naylor should be back for this game, which they desperately need, um, at least for their passing game, to try to open up other options. Um, but, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, honestly, seeing how the Penn State game went against Ohio State, mm-hmm. I think, wasn't that like 42-28 in the end? Something like that. Penn State was actually able to get pretty comfortable in the passing game since their their running game isn't very good. Yeah. And Sean Clifford had a pretty nice day. Mm-hmm. And they were still able to put a good amount of points up on them. So Michigan State has an even better offense, but Penn State's defense is much better than Michigan State's defense. Right. I think that's where it comes down to. Ohio State's defense is slightly better than Michigan State's. Mm-hmm. And once you get on a roll on Michigan State's defense, honestly, it just everything just tears open. And yeah. with how powerful Ohio State is, they could put up 40 in the blink of an eye. Right. Whether it's Travion Henderson or C.J. Stroud going, mm-hmm. they have too many options. Yeah. And, yeah. Yeah, Michigan State is definitely going to have to dig deep for this one. But, again, they're going to have to put up at least, like, 35 to win this game. Yeah. They they do control their own their own destiny. They have stepped up in games that they needed it, like we saw in the Michigan game. So, maybe they can bring that energy for the Ohio State game. But we'll just have to kind of wait and see. Uh on the other side, Michigan just beat Penn State, which, I mean, Penn State pretty is... Pretty big win. Yeah, it, it's a good win. Uh, Penn State has obviously faltered down the line, but they have a, they've had a very tough schedule down the line as well. Uh, so, uh, Michigan's in a good spot now. They're going to play Maryland coming up here. 
And then they have Ohio State, of course, at the end of the season. So we'll be able to kind of determine what we think Ohio State might look like after this Michigan State game. The scary thing I would say for Michigan is like if some chance by some chance Michigan State beats Ohio State, they're going to be mad going into the Michigan game. Listen, man, it's even if they don't lose to Michigan State, they always bring their A game against Michigan. That's true. That's Every true. single there have only been a few years where Michigan caught them slipping, but they were able to gain ground in the second half and still win. Past three, four years, they've been on their A game. Mm -hmm. And they never take it lightly when they go against Michigan, no matter what the stakes are, no matter what the position is. Yeah. It's setting up for Michigan to go in there 10-1. and one. It, Some people are saying this is the ultimate trap game for Michigan, mm -hmm. going to Maryland. Maryland has a good offense, but they've had a lot of injuries. Yeah. A lot of guys in and out of the lineup, and their defense isn't very good. Right. So I still expect Michigan to get the win. It might be close in the first half, but Michigan will probably – Edge it out yeah. in the second half. I was going to say, for the same same reason that Michigan State was a little bit nervous about the Maryland game, Michigan yeah. has the same reason to be. Um, they're definitely a, I mean, they're they're a Big Ten school, so they're they're going to put up put up numbers. They're going to look pretty good in most most of the time. But I think yeah, Michigan should be able to take care of them. And uh, yeah, so Michigan and Michigan State kind of in the same boat. Uh, obviously, Michigan State having the tiebreaker, they control uh, the scenario. But if they lose this weekend, then Michigan now has a chance to be in control so yeah it, it's exciting for the big 10 but um both michigan and michigan state fans i will tell you to be prepared to be disappointed yeah go going going before we do next week's podcast i think i'm going to go back and listen to my pregame thoughts of ohio state games in the in like the past few years because mm -hmm. i know i've been optimistic a few times and they've tricked me every yeah. time so I'm I'm gonna be pretty peaceful, just like in Zen mode <laughs> next week. Okay. Cause I I know what's what's coming. Yeah. Um any other big games that you wanted to talk about before we move on? Well, Wake Forest can go to ten and one if they go to Clemson and win that game. That'll be a huge win for them because Clemson has somewhat gotten their stuff together. They're seven and three. Yeah. Some people earlier in the season thought there was a chance they might not make a bowl, but they're still a pretty good team. Wake Forest going to Clemson and getting that win mm -hmm. would be huge. Even better, even bigger than Pittsburgh beating Clemson at home. That would be a huge win for Wake Forest. Yep. Uh, outside of that, honestly, when you look at the teams in the top four, Oregon goes to Utah. That is pretty big. Yeah. Uh, that is a huge matchup for Apparently, them. and I don't know if the, if the line has changed, but I know on like sports betting and stuff that Utah was favored in that game. Early on, yeah. Uh, again, I don't know if there's some books that have them favored, but yeah. I so, mean, it it'll be dangerous. Oregon has to clean up the. They've cleaned up some flaws in the past few weeks, yeah. But when you get pressure on Anthony Brown, he can still make those dumb mistakes. Mm -hmm. They've gotten the running game going, but there have been times where it's been stopped, and people have taken advantage of their defense at times. Yeah. So we'll have to see with that. Arkansas at Alabama is going to be interesting, but I think Arkansas. I mean, I think Alabama will be able to handle it. Yeah, they've, Honestly, they've figured themselves out. Yeah, Arkans I think. Arkansas should be extremely proud of what they've done in these past two years after that just horrible stretch they had under Chad and Wo Chad Morris when they just hit rock bottom. But they've gotten back on track, and they're going to make a ball game. Georgia's – they're just they're just walking through everybody. Yeah. They got Charleston Southern and Georgia Tech left. <laughs> like Yeah, their season's yeah. basically over. They're, they're, they're ready they're just, for – They're just walking to the playoffs. Yep. And Cincinnati – SMU, that's a real big game. Mm -hmm. SMU can put up points. Yep. Cincinnati hasn't been impressive enough to the playoff committee in the past three or four weeks. Yeah. Blowing out SMU would send a message, mm -hmm. especially if, if Utah plays Oregon close and potentially beats them. If Arkansas plays Alabama close because Alabama has shown many flaws over the past month, Cincinnati goes out there and blows out SMU. Yeah. It it would send a bit of a message. And they got East Carolina at East Carolina last week. They're a bowl team too. Right. So if you impress in these last two weeks, the playoff committee, they're gonna have a strong argument undefeated. Yep. So yeah. Big games for the for a few of these teams. Shout out to Oklahoma State for getting into the top ten. Mm -hmm. And Ole Miss beat Texas A and M last week. Lane Kiffin has that program in a really good place. Yep. All righty. Also, one last thing. Wisconsin might win the Big Ten West. Yeah. <laughs> After coming out looking like they were going to have a down year, 
They just turned it up. Yeah. They found player that people have not heard about much probably because nobody pays attention to Wisconsin that much. Right. Braylon Allen, freshman running back, 6'2", 235 pounds. He's only 17 years old. Yep. They didn't start playing him until this last month. They played Ches Malusi a ton. He started gaining a little bit of ground, but now he's hurt. And Braylon Allen has just been ripping teams apart. Yep, and he's that classic uh, Wisconsin running back. The fact that he's only 17 and he's like, that just a physical beast is just ridiculous. They always find these dudes. I was gonna say Jonathan that are just Taylor, freaks of nature. Monty Ball. Even like, James White was only like five nine, two hundred pounds, and he yeah. was just taking advantage of teams. Just that Wisconsin style. They're you know they're getting the the ball out of the hands of Graham Mertz, and they're just pounding the rock. And shouts out to Kansas, <laughs> beat Texas. A lot of problems in Texas. Yeah. Uh, all right. Switching over. Um, We'll talk about Michigan State, Ohio State, and then Michigan, Ohio State next week. Um, we can do some big preview on that. Um, but now switching sides to college basketball. Like we said, we kind of previewed Michigan and Michigan State a little bit, saying that there's a lot of question marks for both of these teams. Um, but now we have a couple games under our belts, and I don't know. I would say I feel the same way that I did yeah, before. still a lot. Um, but the thing is, there's been already a lot of like upsets in top 25 for NCAA. Yeah, last night Oregon got blitzed by BYU, mm-hmm. so yeah, it's a lot of yep. teams moving up and down. Illinois lost to Marquette, which Marquette's always been a solid program, but big you know, win for Shaka Smart. Illinois, after leaving Texas. Illinois being in the top 10, you know, that's it's just what happens. And then Michigan losing to Seton Hall again, though Seton Hall. Always known as a good program. So I, I can't take a ton away from them. Um, and obvi- like I always think that the college basketball rankings are always weird at the beginning of the season because yeah. so much can change within one season, and you're basing your rankings mostly off of last season. So it, it's hard to figure out. Um, what, do you, what do you see from this Michigan team so far? So they, it's, it's been a tale of the different teams from half to half, from game to game. First game against Buffalo, Jawan Howard, from the jump, hasn't been afraid to schedule really good or difficult competition, and he's going on with it as the team gets better. They scheduled Buffalo, who was the he, they're the predicted champs of the MAC. Mm-hmm. They're experienced, they're tough, and they got talent. They jumped out on them in the first half. They looked really impressive. They were up like forty to nineteen with a few minutes left in the first half. But then Buffalo settled down. Their veterans started getting into it, and. They marched back and gave Michigan a bit of a scare, but Michigan was able to win it in the end. I think they won, uh, what's it, 87, 76 or something like that? It was 88, 76. Okay, 88, so 76, close. yeah. But, yeah, they pulled it out in the end. Then they played Prairie View in D.C. Yeah. for kind of a black college event thing. Mm-hmm. Wasn't much problems. Yeah, Caleb Houston thing. looked really impressive as a freshman. He's a really good shooter. Hunter Dickinson did his thing. The team looked good. Pretty easy win. Yeah. Get to Seton Hall. Uh, it, It's funny that this loss surprised a lot of people, seeing where both teams are. Mm-hmm. Seton Hall is a team made up of fourth and fifth year guys. All tough. They've all gone through several years of building muscle through those strength programs. Mm-hmm. Jared Roden is a dog. Miles Kale is a dog. Their big man is 7-2 in a minutes on defense. And they weren't afraid from the jump. Yeah. Now, Michigan, even though they couldn't hit a three until the second half, they still were, were able to build a pretty good lead mm-hmm. Went into the first half. I mean, into halftime up 31-28. They were able to build an 11-point lead. They were up like 39-28 at some point. But Seton Hall never went away. Yeah. Those experienced guys – they hit timely shots when they needed them. They made plays on defense when they needed it. Mm-hmm. And they just never went away. Every time they needed big baskets, somebody would come up, either go ISO or they would run a play and somebody would hit a shot. Yeah, And they they were relentless at every point. Mm-hmm. Now Michigan, on the other hand, a team made up of primarily freshmen and sophomores. You got a few upperclassmen. You got Brandon Johns. You got Eli Brooks. You got a few other guys. Hunter Dickinson is only a sophomore, but he's one of the best bigs in the country. Mm-hmm. 
things once things got tight it was clear that most of them weren't ready for what was coming Eli Brooks was able to make some shots and Hunter Dickinson when he got the ball made shots they both were ready for the moment but Brandon Johns has kind of regressed from what he was in the tournament he played great in the NCAA tournament Mm -hmm. he's gonna have to get back on track Terrence Williams a sophomore from DC is looking like one of the breakout players from last year he did what he could do but Mm -hmm. He's still not a great free throw shooter, and when he had to hit free throws in the end to tie it, he couldn't. Yeah, Caleb Houston looked like he wasn't ready for the moment. Musa Diabate is still pretty raw on offense. Devontae Jones is still figuring out his what he's what his place in the offense is. Kobe Bufkin came in for a few minutes and made some plays, but he's only a freshman too. There's so much that they're still figuring out. Yeah, and they had a team come in that was prepared to take their heads off. We have to remember now that Michigan, they are not the team that you can, that everybody takes lightly. They're not a surprise team anymore. They're a team that they're a target. Yeah. And even though they're made up of primarily freshmen and sophomores, like you said, preseason ranks are halfway serious, halfway, who knows. Mm -hmm. But they're coming into the game ranked fourth. Seton Hall knows exactly what they want to do and that they want to take down a top team. Mm Mm-hmm. They just weren't ready. Yeah. They have so many question marks. They have so many young players, a new point guard. They have so many things to figure out as the season goes on and so many new guys that have to figure out how to play on that type of level. Yeah. And it showed last night. Right. Yeah, and I think they need to really find that that third guy, kind of similar to like Michigan State last year yeah. where it's like you're getting consistent play out of Hunter Dickinson. You're getting consistent play out of Eli Brooks. Who's going to be that third guy to step up? Because it always seems like you need kind of three main guys so that if somebody's not shooting well, somebody else can pick them up. That's kind of where Michigan's trying to figure themselves out is who's going to be that next guy up, in my opinion. Yeah. Um, now, they do have a somewhat tough game coming up again. They got to play UNLV. 12.30 a.m. game against UNLV. Yeah. What Michigan fans are staying up for that one? I might. I'll, I'll, I'll probably fall asleep. I won't be. I know there are some fans probably flying out to me. There are fans that have probably had these tickets booked since, like, the summer Yeah. for this game. So they'll be there. Right. But, yeah. And UNLV, I mean, they like, they play defense. So they're going to keep the scoring low. That's how they've played all their games. All the, every game they've played has been very close, including yep. Gardner-Webb and North Dakota State. Yeah. But they've done just enough. To get over the hump. They scored 65, 64, 55, and 64 yeah. in three games. So they're not lighting it up, but they also play good defense. Right. So Michigan's just got to be prepared for somewhat maybe of a slower game. Um, but hopefully, I mean, again, UNLV is like a good program. They're a good team. But Michigan should be able to take care of business. Yeah. I, I want to see how the young guys rebound from that because Caleb Houston couldn't get his shot going. He had to guard the, the best player on Seton Hall, Jared Roden. Yeah. And he was a savvy veteran who – Beat him on the first step almost every time. Yeah. Got Caleb in foul trouble. His, his It was clear that his confidence dropped somewhat. Mm-hmm. Can he come back and hit shots and be back and get his mental right? Yeah. I expect Jawan will instill them with confidence and have them ready to go in, yeah. the, in the game Saturday. Yeah. On the green and white side now, boy, they have a schedule. Uh, so, like we talked about before, they lost to Kansas opening opening night. No big deal. Uh, then they went out and crushed Western like they should. Uh, but they're in a similar scenario as Michigan is right now. They're trying to figure out like their rotational pieces, who's going to be the people that step up. And so far, we've only seen two games, so we don't have a lot of information on it. But we got some big games coming up. They got Butler tonight, 3-0. and We know the Butler program is always good, uh, playing in – they're at their place, so it's going to be tough. Um, and, yeah, I mean, Butler's just – they've been well coached. They're always there. They haven't played anybody this season yet, so this is a good, like, uh, setting point for themselves as well. But then uh, next week, I believe – what is it, 24th? 24th, they so, got Loyola Chicago. So we'll have our podcast – before that game, I believe, or maybe that day. Um, and Loyola is tough. 
For real. They're serious. Like, they are... Even with new coach Drew Valentine. They are going to be back in the tournament. They are going to be that team again. They brought back Braden Norris. They brought back Lucas Williamson. And they're deep. And they just... They just yeah. they shoot really well. They play hard. They play sound basketball yes. on both ends of the floor. They barely make mistakes. Yes. And they may not have Cameron Crutwig anymore. But that doesn't matter because... They they got veterans and they got some young guys that can shoot and score, yeah. um, and yeah they're they're just gonna be they're gonna be tough gonna like be they a are. Handful. Yeah, they're gonna be tough like they are every year. They're you know they're they're that similar vein to Seton Hall where they have a lot of seniors and things like that. Um, I'm just gonna point out like so far this season, uh, one of their bench guys, Ryan Schweiger. Six seven senior coming off the bench, a shooter. He scored a lot of points yeah. in some of their games, um, and he's not even like the main focal point of their offense. Like I said, Braden Norris, he's going to lock up just about anybody that he's guarding. He does all the dirty work for that team. And then you know, again, Lucas Williamson, kind of like their main uh, senior guy. Yeah, they're a good nine ten deep. Yeah, of guys that all know exactly what their role is. Mm-hmm. And all know exactly what to do when they're in the game. Yeah, and they're the exact opposite of what Michigan State is. <laughs> so, Michigan State, we will be able to figure out pretty quickly how much growing they're going to need to do. And I, I, I think it'll be a lot, but Michigan State does not have an easy schedule, as you see. Yeah, some they, got, teams. they got Louisville the next game, too. Yeah. So, unlike most teams that start the season easy, Michigan State does not do that. So, we'll be able to figure them out pretty quickly. But I'm 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 interested to see where this goes because I do like like I said before I think Michigan State has some talent and they just kind of need to need to figure it out. Um, anything else you want to bring up about college basketball before we move on? Yeah, so I'll, I'll just look through the rankings a little bit and talk about a few teams. So Gonzaga, their game against Texas. I mean, Drew Timmy. Yeah, thirty-seven just, points. <laughs> it yeah. it was like child's play. Yep. He he was getting the ball in the perfect place and making simple moves mm-hmm. for the entire game, and it was just unstoppable. Yeah, he's he's going to be a problem for a lot of teams this year. Mm-hmm. UCLA, they're they're so deep. They're incorporating young players now, yeah. like freshman Peyton Watson. You got Johnny Juzang. You got Jaime Hawkins. You got Tiger Campbell. Like it, it's they're they're so deep. It's like ever since their late season run last year, they have just gotten into this groove that. It's so hard for them to get out of. Yeah, they their lowest scoring game so far is eighty six against Villanova. Yeah. Besides that, they scored ninety five and a hundred. <laughs> so they yeah. Next week though, Gonzaga plays UCLA. Yes. That is prime time. Well, not prime time, but it's on ESPN. It's at ten o'clock. Ten o'clock. But stay up to watch it, please. Yeah, that game. If you want to watch good college basketball, that should be a good one. Yeah. So so far, I think Purdue looks like the best team in the Big Ten right now. Mm-hmm. I've watched them a few. They have Travion Williams coming off the bench right now. Yeah. And they're starting a freshman at the four with Zach Eady, and it's all still just working out. Mm-hmm. Like, they, they look so good and so deep. It's ridiculous. Duke, Paolo Banchero, who got into a little bit of controversy this past week, mm-hmm. aiding and abetting in a DWI with Coach K's grandson, <laughs> yeah, Michael Savarino. He mm-hmm. still played, though, against Gardner-Webb. Yeah. Still looked like Paolo. Trevor Keels is a name people need to remember. Mm-hmm. He is a big-bodied, skilled two-guard yeah. who can shoot the lights out and take you to the rim. Mm-hmm. He's really good. And they will be playing Gonzaga. Is that on Thanksgiving? That's on Thanksgiving, right? 26th? That's the Thursday. Either way. They're playing Gonzaga. Gonzaga, <laughs> it, we're going to get to see a lot of them next week. and we're gonna, That's good, some good basketball. Gonzaga, U, UCLA, Gonzaga, Duke. So we're going to be able to figure out some of the top teams pretty quick. I think. Yeah. And then Illinois, they've been playing without Kofi Coburn, mm-hmm. which I'm still surprised they had the, the challenges they had against Marquette because they have so much experience right. that came back. And Andre Carbello, he, he takes so many chances on offense and defense that are so unnecessary. Yeah. He has to learn how to clean it up and not just like go for the flash right. and highlight plays all the time. And granted, we've seen it work out for him in the past, but it, like like you said, consistency-wise – yeah, it's not great. This is the first time as a full time starter, though. So you, yeah, there's obviously going to be some growing pains. Right, Memphis, Amani Bates and Jalen Dern. They're they're young guys. They they look like two 
two phenoms right now. Yeah. Granted, yeah. they haven't played a whole lot yet. Exactly. But, but yeah, over the last few years, I've had my reservations on uh, Amani Bates because of the whole situation with the the academy he was in yeah. and the way he's the dramatics. Yeah, all the dramatics and the AAU stuff and. Him playing under Penny and with one of his best friends and Jalen Dern and all those guys, he it looks like he just loves the position he's in. Mm-hmm. They have him playing point guard for the most part, and he's doing a great job passing. Yeah, we know what his offensive talent is. He's almost six ten, and he's like a two guard, mm-hmm. <laughs> automatic three pointer. He's top five pick for the most part. So yeah, they're gonna win a lot of games. They might lose some too because of their youth, mm-hmm. but they have experience to balance it. So right, yeah, they're looking pretty good. Oregon took a surprising loss to BYU last night. They have a lot to figure out. Mm -hmm. North Carolina had a very close game with College of Charleston last night, but they also were able to pull it out because of their experience. Yeah. I think Tennessee is a sleeper. They have a point guard named Kennedy Chandler, freshman Mm -hmm. from Tennessee, who looks like a a straight-up stud right now. He's only like 6'1", like 180 pounds at the most. Yeah. But he's savvy around the rim. He has great handle. He has a nice jumper. And he just he's a high-level player mm-hmm. at his size. Besides that, um, underrated prospect going into this draft that people need to know about. And I'm going to click into it just because his name slipped my mind. <laughs> Jabari Smith for Auburn. Okay. He's 6'10", listed at 220. He looks skinnier than 220. But who knows? He could be around that. Mm-hmm. He is like, he's a traditional four man that can shoot. And he also can handle the ball. He can go, he can rebound and take it coast to coast. He has some skill, but he's still raw. He has so much potential. And he's flashed it in his first few games. Their first game, he had 23 and 10 rebounds and just dominated. Yeah. Second game, he only had eight and six, but he still looked good. He has a ton of talent, and a lot of people are predicting him to be a top 10 pick. Auburn should be pretty good. Watch out for Jabari Smith. Yeah. And I will say again, it's going to be another one of those years, just like it's kind of become, watch out for the Big Ten because they're going to eat it themselves. Yeah, Everything, everything between like two and like seven in that conference, nobody knows. It could all just flip. Yeah. Because, yeah. As we see now, Michigan State has a lot of question marks. Right. Also, before we end, got to bring up the hometown guys, Oakland. Mm-hmm. Got a big win at Oklahoma State. Jamal yep. Kane is looking like he's the guy. Brought yep. him in from Marquette, hometown guy from Pontiac. Yep. Trey Townsend from Oxford has, also looking has really played good. every minute possible, and he's one of two players in Division One to play all the minutes. Yeah, kind of like a updated Iron Man of today's yeah. college basketball. I, I don't think that's going to – keep up i hope it's not but trey has played a lot better um than maybe we saw last year and he's kind of he's kind of being the jack of all trades for that team right now yeah also jalen moore he hasn't been very efficient on offense but he's made big shots Mm -hmm. and he's one of the best point guards in the country they play alabama this friday and i will be at the game yeah and i will be be in tuscaloosa to see alabama play that'll be that'll be a good one because oakland is playing very good defense at the moment yes all righty we're actually going to talk about the NBA for a little bit. And I want to start with Cade Cunningham. Uh, because the last time that we talked about Cade was kind of like when he just had his debut against Jalen Green. Yeah, uh, He's had some games since that. And the most recent game that he had was his best. And unfortunately for the Pistons, they got blown out. Uh, they played the Kings. They lost 129 to 107. Uh, everybody for the Kings got involved, it seemed like. <laughs> yes. Um, it, like, even Chimenzi Mentu, Metu, like, 16 and 10. Harrison Barnes, 15. Rashawn Holmes had 19. Can I, can I just interrupt you real quick and say Chimenzi Metu is more important to the Kings now than Marvin Bagley? Yeah. I saw Marvin play for, like, five minutes, and that was about it. I just had to say that. It's kind of sad. And, but good for Chimenzi. And to be fair, though, I've seen, like uh, – Metu have some pretty good games in the past. Yeah, he's athletic. He's a good defender. He's yeah. He's got um, some talent. When was he in the? Uh, he was on the Blazers, I believe. Um, and he he had some some decent games here and there. So like you could see the the talent is there. Oh, he's on San, San Antonio. Yeah, he was, I was just about to say he. Okay. I remember watching him on the Spurs. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, but 
there's talent there. Um, obviously, like we said before, Harrison Barnes has like revitalized his career somehow. Um, and yeah, the Aaron Fox is playing better lately too. I think the biggest problem that I have with this game is Tyrese Halliburton had a double double, and the Pistons could have drafted him. Anyway, yeah. Uh, sorry. That's aside. Cade Cunningham, twenty five, eight and eight with five threes. Five of eleven from historic three. stat line for a rookie. Ten of twenty from the field. Played thirty five minutes. It was it was it was the best game by far. Um, and the good thing to see too, Killian Hayes or not Killian. Sadiq Bey He's also good. had a big game. He had 28 points. Mm-hmm. So if the Pistons can just get on the same page together, it seems like that. I feel like that's maybe the only thing holding them back at the moment. Listen, the the funny thing is they're three and ten right now. Yeah, but if you watch their games when they lose, they look like the worst team in the league by far. Yeah. But their teams was wor- with worse records than them. Mm-hmm. Houston is one in thirteen. Yep, the but Pelicans they, are one in fourteen or thirteen, I believe, too. They just won a game. A oh, few did days they? Ago. Okay. they have two, but still, right. those two teams appear to have more young talent mm-hmm. and more veteran talent than the Pistons. But the yeah. Pistons have three wins, mm-hmm. so it's it's a weird thing where their losses look so lopsided and embarrassing. Yeah, but there are also a few losses where they play competitive and they've won three games, like that game at Toronto last Saturday. They played their butts off. Mm-hmm. The whole starting five played well. Cade came up good in the clutch. Killian had the best game of his career so far. Mm-hmm. They have those types of games, and then they have games like the Sacramento one where or, they just look terrible. Or Cleveland where they lost by 20 and exactly. scored only 78 points. <laughs> Is You don't know what you're going to get game to game from them. Yeah. Which, I mean, it's fine. Again, I don't have any expectations of this this team. I'm more concerned about Cade's second season, to be honest. Um, this team is still developing. I want them to kind of lose, but look competitive. They haven't looked as competitive as they did last year, which is a like a slight concern. But again, I think it is just getting a chemistry down with these guys um, because like Cade is now involved so much. They're trying to slowly involve Luca, and they need to put Saban Lee on this team. Listen, man, I will die on this hill. Corey Joseph is only useful on winning teams. Yeah. He was really good in San Antonio. He was a fantastic backup in Toronto. Yeah. Why is he why why does he need to be here? Right. I just want to know why Saban Lee was in the G League for so long. And now that he's on the Who team knows? again, why is Frank Jackson doubling his minutes? I, I just don't understand it. This man was tearing up the G League, and I know the G League is not the NBA. I, I completely understand that. But but there, the, when you go to the G League, you, you're supposed to do those types of things to show. Yes, what, I'm supposed to be in the league. What happened to Jalen Green? He was drafted from the G League because he played well in the G League. Saban Lee went down to the G League. He played very well, but now he doesn't get minutes. I don't understand that concept, um, especially when we saw signs last year of him playing well. To me, I just I don't understand. Like, is there something there that we're missing? Uh, I don't. Who knows? Listen, there are inner workings that come with front offices and GMs that we will never understand because we're never in the position. Yeah. From from the outside view, we always think we know what's right. Mm-hmm. But this does seem like a position where Saban Lee should be getting more minutes than Corey Joseph and Frank Jackson. Right. Because he is energy off the bench, and from the small glimpses we've seen of Luca. He's instant energy off the bench. Yes. He usually comes in and hits a, a, a three or two yeah. in the like seven or eight minutes he plays. Yep. And even though he's not the most athletic guy, he plays hard on defense and gives it everything he has. Right. And, and he's a constant voice on the floor. And like at this point, I'm glad that, you know, he's getting the minutes over Trey Lyles since Kelly Olynyk has gone down. Yeah. Um, I think that was a good move. Um, the other thing that's confusing to me is why Hamadou Diallo is not getting as much time. Same with Josh Jackson. Has Hamadou been hurt? Or I mean, no, he's. I, mean, I haven't it, seen him play in a minute. In this game against the Kings, I mean, I'm looking at the stat sheet. He might have been hurt beforehand. I can't remember. They exactly. resigned him for a reason. Yeah, because he's a part of the future. But plans. he hasn't been playing much. So, like, I think they need to just ditch. Like, how many people? Five, six, seven, eight. 
8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. Why are they having a 13-man roster or rotation? Get rid of it. Get rid of it. Frank Jackson, I know you've you've been like this rotation guy that's kind of gone around the league already. In his I, I don't mind I don't mind him being a shooter off the yes. bench. But the point of this season is for the development of your most important mm-hmm. young players. Not every young player. Frank Jackson is still a young player. Right. We don't care about his development. Yeah. We don't care about Trey Lyles' development. Mm-hmm. He's only like 25, yeah. and it doesn't matter. Right. It doesn't. But, like, even with Josh Jackson, like, you know who he is at this point. He's in that similar vein as those guys. But we've also seen more bright spots than, like, a Trey Lyles or things like that. Yeah. So, like, like, why are we giving – I don't know. I don't know. It, it's just – to me, I don't, I don't understand it. But it, it's a recipe for losing games, which yes. is what they should be doing. Yes, and but, I'll be 100% yeah. honest. Like, I don't have cable. I don't get to see as much of the games anymore. So I'm not watching, like, super close. I'm seeing clips and highlights and um, things like that and listening to how other people are talking about the team. Um, but that is just kind of my my take on it. Yeah, I, I honestly think what they're doing is decent, but I think they could follow the OKC pattern. Where they are, they are giving all their most important, most talented young players that are all babies and toddlers of the NBA. They're giving them all of the time. Yeah, and they're at five and eight right now, mostly because Shea Gill just is an All Star level player. Yes, already. But they're playing their most important young guys. They're letting Josh Giddy fail and make mistakes and learn. They're letting Lou Dort terrorize players <laughs> and get better as an offensive player. Yep. Darius Baisley's improving. Poku is improving. De- De- I think Derek Favors might be one of the few. Him and Mike Muscala might be one of the few like real veterans on the team mm-hmm. that get serious minutes. Besides that, they're letting the children play. Right. And they're five and eight. Mm-hmm. They beat the Lakers twice. Yeah. Like, forget Corey Joseph. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Trey Lyles can shoot sometimes. Get him out of there. Yeah. <laughs> Kelly Olynyk. He's fine. I think he's, he's fine. He's fine, but he's been choppy. Yeah. He's been on and off. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Emphasize I, the important young guys. Yeah. I will say I'm a little bit disappointed in Isaiah Stewart so far this season. He hasn't looked as good as yeah, I he, thought he might. He's been rushing things a lot. I watched that Kings game. Every time he would get an offensive rebound, he would just toss it up real quick. Yeah. And even uh, Greg Kelser was like, pl- just slow down and like take it slow. You don't have to rush everything. Right. He's playing too fast. Yeah. All right, that's the Pistons. Uh, we have to talk about some of the top teams. I only want to talk about a couple teams. Um, I think we should start with the top two teams in the East because that's where exactly where I was going to go. Yeah. Um, because it is a tale of two teams. Honestly, Washington is on top ten and three, which is insane. Brad Beal hasn't even been high level yet. No, he hasn't played normal Brad Beal, I guess. Um, but that team has just figured it out. They have had an easy schedule, but they just beat the Bucks not too long ago. They're doing what a good team is supposed to do. Yeah, so they're they're still legit, um, but they have had an easier schedule. On the other hand, the Bulls, who are 10-4, and four, have just beaten the Lakers. They beat the Clippers. Uh, they beat the Nets. They've lost twice to the Sixers, which is kind of weird, but they've beat a ton of playoff teams so far already. So, And recently, they are without Nikola Vucevic because of COVID protocols. And this team is still winning. They're a fun team to watch. And we thought they might be fun, but I don't think we figured they'd be clicking this quickly. Listen, it's 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 kind of shocking. Like, first yeah. of all, that Tony Bradley signing was low-key really good because mm-hmm. he's done a great job just coming in and doing his job with the starters. But DeMar DeRozan MVP yeah. is serious. And the thing is, it took him to become to go to Chicago for people to realize who he is. He's gotten better in San Antonio when nobody yes. was paying attention. Yes, I was going to say that. He went to San Antonio. Nothing really changed about his career since like he left Toronto. Like he's looked the same, but people forget that he's still this guy and they start now they're he's starting to almost get into this Chris Paul scenario where people keep thinking, "Oh, he's getting too old. He doesn't have the athleticism anymore, but his shooting has gone up. He's gotten better." He's hitting like two. Or, he's like two, hitting two or three threes a game. Yeah, and like comfortably, confidently doing it. Yeah, that just seeing the mid range dominate is beautiful within itself. Mm-hmm. But he's locked in on defense. He is. He's serious. Yep. Like I remember two years ago when he first went to San Antonio, 
I predicted he would be a surprise MVP candidate. Mm-hmm. And he would average like 27 or 28 and just take it out on everybody. Yeah. I was two years off. Right. DeMar is finally doing it. Yeah. And it's, it's great to see. Yeah. And quickly, I'll run through um, some of the Eastern standings real quick because they're really weird. Um, and it is early on in the season. But Cleveland is in the top six. New York is still in the top six, which is cool. Charlotte, Philadelphia, Boston. Toronto started to pick it up a little bit now that Pascal um, Siakam is healthy. Milwaukee, Atlanta, and Indiana are out of the playoff race. Again, it's super early on, and I know it's kind so, of irrelevant, but Mo- what Milwaukee, the hell? No Chris Middleton, no Drew Holiday. Giannis has only played like four games. Yeah. It makes sense. Right. Atlanta, Trey Young himself has said, and this is kind of alarming, that it's tough for them to get locked into these regular season games like they were in the playoffs. Mm -hmm. After that run they just had, these regular season games just seem like, I'm sure, just like exhibitions to them. Yeah. But these past few games, they've been playing better. Trey Young looked like Trey Young putting up 42 and 10 against the Milwaukee Bucks. Yeah. Indiana, that's been kind of weird. Yeah. Although they played better lately. I was going to say, and they've had some tough losses, but I'm just surprised because Indiana is finally healthy. Brogdon's playing, Sabonis is playing, Levert is playing. Like, even Miles Turner has played having one of the best starts of his career. Yeah, so like they're healthy and they're still not what you would expect, I guess. Yeah. So I still think they could pick it up, but they might be fighting for the play in because yeah. right now the East is looking better than the West, honestly. Which is which is cra- crazy, very surprising. Like, yeah, seeds one through the first seed to Indiana are all teams that could make the playoffs. Yeah. There are going to be some teams left out that we thought would be better. They all have a lot of talent. Um, okay, let's swip, swap over to the Western Conference real quick, finish this out. Golden State, still rolling. They're 12-2. and two. Phoenix, they've gotten onto a run. Yeah. They've won nine straight. They're now 10-3. and three. Jay Kidd in Dallas, making a little bit of a difference. Poor Zingas. Has gotten his it past going. two games have been fire. Yeah, they sat him out for a little bit to try to get back healthy, and now he's played really good. Again, his biggest problem is can he keep it up? Consistent throughout the is that's the thing. He has games like this, and then he'll go on a two week run mm-hmm. where he looks like a shell of himself. Yeah. Um, and then of course, like we said, the Warriors are just killing it. They also just beat the Nets. Uh, Steph Curry went off in this game, thirty seven points, nine threes. And they're they're just getting production out of everyone. Andrew Wiggins has had a really good start. That to game the against Minnesota, he he had some anger to take out on them. Yeah. It was it was hilarious to watch. Yeah. And if you're watching highlights, the cool thing about Golden State is they are locked in on defense. Like they are solidifying defense. And it's almost like they're taking notes from the New York Knicks of just like realizing that if you play hard defense in the NBA. Things you can come win, easier. You can win a lot of games. Yeah. And when you have the offensive firepower that the, the Warriors have that the Knicks don't have, that's where you can turn into 12-2. and two. And you can stop. Like, they held Kevin Durant 6 of 19, 2 of 6 for only 19 points. So, like, I don't know. Maybe they got something going there. And they're still going to get Klay Thompson, one of the best defenders in the league, back yeah. sometime in December. So, lots going on. I love that the Lakers are still losing. Uh, they are without LeBron, so I'll give him a little bit and of slack. But what was Russ supposed to do with LeBron out? I mean, he's been playing pretty good, to be honest. If you look at his numbers, he's had a few good games, but the Lakers are supposed to be like eleven and four right now. Well, yeah, I mean they lost or like to, eleven and three. They lost to the Timberwolves. Uh, Two losses to the Thunder, blowout to the Timberwolves, smacked by the Bulls. Yeah, I don't mind it. I don't either, but I'm saying, yeah, no, bringing I, in Russ wasn't the best idea, but they still did. I get you. Um, the last thing I will mention on the NBA really quick. I still don't understand. Like, I get that they're very young, but I don't understand how Houston is only one in thirteen because they have so much talent. And like I said, we said it previously. They we saw them last year compete with their young guys. Christian Wood is not playing as good as he did last year at least as consistently. We're not seeing stuff out of, like, Kenyon Martin Jr. 
We're not seeing as much out of like Jason. Jalen Green will have one good game and then a string of like six yeah. straight. So I don't know if it's like a chemistry issue with Jalen Green commanding so much attention that I like, think they're just not playing very good basketball. Honestly, yeah, it's a bunch of guys taking turns. Yeah, and same thing, same thing too with the Pelicans. Like, ugh. It, it, it's, it's not looking good in New Orleans, and I know they don't have Zion, but like that's not <laughs> that's not the problem because yeah. they've been been getting good production out of Nikhil Alexander Walker. Brandon Ingram, I don't know what he's doing. He's playing well, but Brandon Ingram alone can't. Jonas Valanciunas has been playing well too. Yeah. So it's just like I don't know. They they can't. It's just not working right now. Figure it out. And I'm scared. And they got a first year head coach in Willie Green, so he's figuring things out too. Yeah, but we'll see. NBA has been fun so far. Honestly, it's it's interesting, and there's a lot going on. All right. Here we go. NFL picks. Here we go. We got to get the into most it. important part of the show. Uh, Malik beat me last week. Unfortunately, he beat me eight to s- to five. Hmm. Eight to five. So eight to uh, five. Yeah, that was rough. Um, there was obviously a wash on the Detroit Pittsburgh game, but um, Malik's notable win, I would say New England, New England, Minnesota, Philadelphia. Like those were your big ones. I, I've I've been pretty. Oddly consistent on my taking chances games this this season. Yeah, um, not on the Russell Wilson one though. But you know, I tried to bait you yeah. into that one anyway. Yeah. So here we go. I have seventy nine correct. Malik has eighty eight, and now we are getting into over halfway through the season. Let's keep it rolling, shall we? New England at Atlanta Thursday night. Atlanta looked like a mess last week, and New England looks like they're getting it all together. I could see Atlanta winning this game, but I just can't pick them. I'm going with New England. I like what that offense is becoming for New England. Mac Jones is starting to get chemistry with uh, Hunter Henry, and Kendrick Bourne is looking like a star in some of these games. That contested catch he made for that touchdown last week was high level. Mm-hmm. They're just they're just getting it done. Ramondre Stevenson emerging as a rookie. Brandon Bolden, they're like four deep in the running back core. Whenever a guy gets hurt, somebody else steps up. And they're just making plays. Got to go New England. Yep. Uh, I am nervous that Atlanta just somehow wins this game. Detroit at Cleveland. Yikes, Cleveland looked bad last week, too. Granted, they were without Nick Chubb, but they have Dearness Johnson. They have one of the be- another deep running back core. Um, Nick Chubb should be back in this game. I can't see how Detroit even hangs in this game because they're so terrible at uh, stopping the run. Cleveland's defense might lock in again. Yeah. In this one. And, Gotta uh, go Cleveland. I mean, the Lions kind of stopped Najee Harris, but Pittsburgh offensive line is terrible. I don't see them doing that against uh, Nick Chubb. Indianapolis at Buffalo. Buffalo's got back on track, I think. I think they're they're good to go. Indianapolis keeps winning games, barely. Yeah. Uh, they, they don't look convincing in most of their wins. Jonathan Taylor is the only thing that looks convincing about them. Um, I also I have to go with Buffalo again. So do I. So, Baltimore at Chicago. Now, Baltimore took a bad loss to Miami last week. It's very disappointing. Um, Chicago coming off their bye. They're now healthy. They have David Montgomery. But I think this has got to be a Baltimore get-right game. Because if they lose back-to-back games against Miami and Chicago, whew, their season could turn out real bad real quick. Um, Yeah. I think I gotta take Baltimore. We got. Don't worry. We got a lot of uh, toss-up games so, coming up. Justin Fields, thirtieth in yards, thirty, tied thirty-third in touchdowns, eight interceptions, and thirty-second in QBR. He looked better. In He's his been last slightly game. improving the past few games, mm-hmm. but I'm gonna go Baltimore too. Yeah. Houston at Tennessee. Tennessee has stepped it up. Big time, defensively especially. Um, and I don't know. I don't know how they keep getting wins, but they are. Um, and Houston, oh boy. They're lost. They are. They're lost in the weeds. In a lot of trouble. Uh, I have to go with Tennessee. Yeah. They're lost in Houston traffic. They're lost in They're lost in everything. I was hoping that getting Tyrod back would kind of help them. It doesn't look like that's going to be the case. Um, but we'll see. He had a few good ones in him. <laughs> they are also coming off a 
Are they coming off their bye, or is their, their bye was last week, the week before? I think they're coming off the bye. Okay. I don't remember them playing last week. Yeah, I think they're coming off the bye. So maybe they get right. But Okay, here we go. NFC North matchup, Green Bay at Minnesota. Green Bay keeps figuring out ways to win. But Minnesota still has all that talent. And they've played in a ton of close games. The scary thing is I think it might be not till after this game, but I know that Bakhtiari is coming back soon. Jair Alexander is coming back soon. So Green Bay's could get even better. Um, but they are at Minnesota. Minnesota's got all the talent. Do you want to pick first? That's not how this works. <laughs> you don't ask me if I want to pick first. Okay, then I'm going to take Minnesota <laughs> okay. for the upset. I'm going to trust um, immunized Rodgers. Mm. Okay. Aaron, and even Aaron though Jones they, will be out in this game, but they have one of the best backups in A.J. Dillon. Even though they only scored 17 last week, they locked down the Seahawks offense. Yeah. And, yeah, I, I trust them as a whole. I think this could, even be on a, the road. this could be a shootout game. Miami at the New York Jets. Mike White uh, came back down to earth last week, didn't he? Which Mike White will we get? <laughs> And Miami's defense has figured something out. I mean, they played Houston two weeks ago, but that's not impressive. But they did play really good against Lamar Jackson. And uh, they threw some weird schemes at the at the Ravens. I don't know how the Ravens didn't really figure it out, but they didn't. Do they keep implying that? You you didn't hear, did you? What? Oh, boy. What didn't I hear? They announced earlier Joe Flacco will start in this game. Oh. You, have, you only have one choice, Joey. Oh, man. <laughs> Man, I just, I just threw the a Dolphins, wrench in things. Just when the Dolphins are starting to play good. You only have one choice. All right, I'm going with the Jets. I am going two a time. <sighs> Dang it. Threw a wrench in your plans, man. Man, but imagine if the Jets win this game. <laughs> cool. Flacco glows out in a blaze of glory. Oh. All right, New Orleans at Philadelphia. Can I pick first? Yes, this is a pivotal game for both teams, I think. Listen, I like the chemistry that the Eagles are starting to gain again. Jalen Hurts and Devontae Smith look good against the Broncos. They might get Miles Sanders back in this game. Even though the Broncos are kind of stuck in the middle and like just lost right now. I think the Eagles are playing better football. I don't trust Trevor Simeon. I think he's played pretty good, but I, I understand. Yeah, I, I don't think he's good, good enough to raise the level of that offense, though. He's good enough to just keep – to game manage and keep things moving. Mm-hmm. I think Jalen Hurts and Devontae Smith make some more big plays. Really good game for the Eagles. Eagles win. Good. I don't have to pull at my heartstrings of picking the Eagles. <laughs> um, I'm going to go with New Orleans, obviously, in this one. Um, hopefully, New Orleans gets Kamara back. I think they're going to need him. Um, but I am going on the fact that New Orleans defense gets it done. They're seeing that Devontae Smith is maybe getting some chemistry with Jalen Hurts. Marshawn Lattimore will be on Devontae Smith. And he won't be able to do anything. If Marshawn Lattimore can shut down Mike Evans, I think he can shut down Devontae Smith. So I'm going New Orleans based on their defense. Here's a fun one. Washington at Carolina. There are chances Cam will start against Ron Rivera. Washington just beat the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. They actually looked good. Maybe like we thought they would at the beginning of the season. Now the problem is they did lose Chase Young. That's unfortunate. Yes. Um and Carolina, on the other hand, he's back. Cam Newton is back. P.J. Walker played pretty good. Christian McCaffrey looked healthy. They threw a touchdown to Robbie Anderson. And Carolina still has that really good defense that they invested a lot in this season. Carolina might be on their way up. But Washington, I, I, riding that momentum of beating the Bucks, that's a tough one. I really don't know. What, I want to go with Carolina because I have them on my fantasy team, some Carolina guys, but I honestly could see Cam coming out and then Washington doing something to stop. I don't know. Um, but I'm, I'm going to go with Carolina in this one. I think it's a safer option. Just to go on the opposite side. Okay, this will be your... I'm going to go Washington and Ron Rivera. I think they're going to send pressure at Cam. Mm-hmm. I think he's at the point where when you send that level of pressure, I don't think he's making moves like he used to in the pocket. Mm-hmm. 
I don't think he has the arm to make the highly, highly impressive throws under pressure anymore. Yeah. Even though the Panthers will scheme a lot to get that run game going for Cam and Christian McCaffrey. Yeah. And I will say this is probably Cam's best receiving core that he's ever had. I'm just going to go with the, yeah, the football team. Okay. I, I, I really, I could see Washington actually keeping that momentum and winning this game. San Francisco at Jacksonville. Wouldn't it be hilarious if Jacksonville won this game? Yeah. I'm going but with San Fran. Be- I'm going with San Fran. I fe- I think they've figured themselves out. Obviously, they beat the Rams this past Monday night. Um, but they say that they they always love playing the Rams and they've had good records against the Rams. It's kind of their their rivalry game. They've almost turned it into at least for San Francisco players from what I heard. So it could just be because they played the Rams, that's why they played so good. But they, I, I feel like they figured themselves out a little bit more. George Kittle and Jimmy Garoppolo have looked insane. And Jacksonville just looks like a mess besides maybe James Robinson. Uh, Trevor Lawrence has still only thrown, what, five touchdowns on the season. So I don't know. Jacksonville needs some more time. San Francisco. I'm not even going to play around with this one. I'm just, just San Francisco. Yeah. Not even going to play games. Yeah, we'll keep it fun if they actually lose. Yeah, Cincinnati at Oakland, another big game for both of these teams. Really interesting matchup. Cincinnati coming off their bye. Oakland could have taken the reins on the AFC West, but they, they got lost. Beat up. Patrick Mahomes got right in that game, and uh, yeah, so now Oakland's got to to rebound off of that. I don't know. I don't know if they're going to be able to. I feel like Cincinnati, because they didn't play as well going into their bye, that them getting their bye when they did was good, and I think they're going to be able to come back from their bye stronger and get back on pace of how they started the season. So I'm going with Cincinnati in this one. I'll go Raiders. You do have the wiggle room to be able to do that. Yeah. Which could lead to me losing even more. Honestly, I don't have reasoning. I agree with you on Pretty much all of those points. <laughs> but there are always those two or three games every week where yeah. there's a win that just doesn't make sense. Right. And this might be one of those. Dallas at Kansas City. Fireworks. Can I pick first? Go for it. Listen, man. The guy with the $500 million contract. <laughs> the guy that owns part of the Kansas City Royals. The man with the voice that sounds like Kermit the Frog. The man with he, the TikTok famous brother. Oh, my God. He looks so miserable in those TikToks. Let's not even get on that. He lit back up last week. Mm-hmm. And I think he is excited to go against the supposed team of America, mm-hmm. the Dallas Cowboys. I think he. I think he's up at night every day until this game is coming. He wants to prove a point to show he's still who everybody thinks he is. Mm-hmm. Give me Kansas City. All righty. I'm going with Dallas. I hate it. I hate Dallas. <laughs> but I'm going with them. They have so much talent on their team, it makes me sick. And this could be the Trayvon Diggs MVP night. I, I, I don't know how they get interceptions every week, but they do. Um and I can see Mahomes trying to get a little too fancy off of last week. And, yeah, Dallas defense is much improved. All right, here we go. Sunday night, Battle of the Birds. Arizona Cardinals at the Seattle Seahawks. I'm going to let, let, let you pick first. Hopefully, Kyler Murray plays. Hopefully, DeAndre Hopkins plays. Hopefully, Russell Wilson figures out how to throw the ball with his injured finger. This could be ugly or this could be a really good game. And I'm not sure exactly where it's going to go. I am going to pick Seattle because I am nervous that Arizona's wow. the wheels could fall off. We've seen it from Arizona a few times where they start really hot. It happened last year. They started really hot in the season. And all of a sudden, like things just started not going their way. Kyler wasn't as effective. I feel like Russell Wilson's going to be mad that he – Played so bad last week, and he's going to figure it out. So I'm going with Seattle. I'm also going to go Seattle. Dang it. <laughs> Listen, man, I I, I got to play a little bit of the mental game. Yeah, just with the uncertainty of Arizona. I think. I'm also going Seattle. Okay. 
right. trusting my boy Russ and sticking with my strategy. Pittsburgh. Gotta keep a little distance. Pittsburgh at the Chargers. Monday night. If Ben Roethlisberger is back, maybe Pittsburgh has a little bit of a chance. It's, it's the Sunday night game. Is it? Yeah. What's Monday night? Sunday night. Did I miss? Monday night is Giants Buccaneers. Oh, I didn't write that one down. <laughs> Dang it. We are deeply researched here on this podcast, everybody. Sorry. I wrote it it's, up it's just fine. before we started. It's fine. Okay, so Arizona, Seattle is not the Sunday. Darn it. Okay, Pittsburgh at, Lo- at the Chargers. Both teams are kind of struggling right now. The Chargers aren't looking that great. But the, uh, the Steelers look like they have no life. Yeah. Really. And was, with the Chargers being at home, I'm going to go with the Chargers. Yeah, I'm just going to make it simple. Justin Herbert has been struggling, and I still trust that Pittsburgh defense. I'm going to go Steelers in an upset. Okay. I can see where it happens. Okay, here we go. Giants at the Bucks, right? It's at the Bucks. Okay. This is a <coughs> bless you. This is a get right game for Brady. I'm not even playing around. Okay. I don't think Daniel Jones turns into Danny Dimes <laughs> for this one. He might play okay, but there's there's just so much that goes wrong for that team on a week to week basis. Yeah. Tom had two interceptions last week. Yeah. The Giants have a pretty good secondary. James Bradbury. Saquon Barkley is going to be back for this game. Do the Bucks lose two in a row? Uh, there's a part of me that really wants to pick the Giants. I doubt that they give Saquon Barkley a high volume. No. They, yeah. Well, coming off the bye, they m- might be able to. But I guess he was limited earlier in the week. Unless so he not. starts off hot or something. Uh, How many differences do we have real quick? Oh, we already have seven differences. I'm going with the Bucks. <laughs> We don't need to more have more than that. I don't want to take the chances. Yeah, Bucks. There are your NFL picks. And like I said, next week, we're going to talk about Ohio State against the Michigan teams. Michigan State will have against Ohio State. We'll preview Michigan-Ohio State. Hopefully get some more uh, college basketball stuff because there are going to be some big games next week. Um, and maybe there's some NBA, NBA stuff. We'll get more picks. Maybe there's more news. We'll see what's happening. But that is it for today. We will see you next time. I'm in views from the sideline. I'm your host, Joey Tysick. My partner, Malik Hill. We'll see you guys next time. I got nothing to do. Just go blue. Hope they win. <laughs>